Hey guys, welcome back to the channel with more of The Expanse. This is Season 3, Episode 4. And last time we got to see the crew of the Rosinante interact with Christian and Bobby, and that was super fun. Um, a lot of strong personalities coming together, butting heads at times, and people not really being friends. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that uh, relate those relationships uh, evolve going forward. Uh, they were really open with what they've been doing and what their goals are though so at least they're coming somewhat from a place of honesty so far uh, meanwhile secretary general gillis fired five railguns at five martian ships uh first strike ships so that um to ensure to ensure their own safety um is his is what aaron wright convinced them of unfortunately the fifth railgun uh, it shut off. I wasn't able to fire it right away because they had turned it off and then turned it back on earlier because Secretary Gillis had changed his mind. He didn't want to fire because of what Anna had talked to him about. But he is convinced by Aaron Wright to fire and that fifth one just had to reboot before it could fire. And so I actually wouldn't be completely surprised if Aaron Wright planned that um to send a message to gillis uh that because you hesitated look what happened you have to be ruthless you have to just fire you have to do everything possible to win and no hesitation and yeah if even if he didn't plan this if he didn't mess tinker with something somehow uh he does go to anna and tries to blame her for the 2.2 or 2.3 million people that died in the nuclear blast sent by the fifth martian ship um he wants her to his end goal is yeah he wants secretary gillis secretary general gillis to not have any hesitation and to be ruthless and so he's trying to curb anna's um influence in uh, influence on him so that'll be really interesting to see also uh lots of I'm just loving the show right now. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to continue. So if you guys want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. If you're watching this on YouTube, this actually aired there a week early. And so you can check out next week's episode right after you finish this one, also on Patreon. But yeah, let's get started. There's a lot of ships. Belter Salvage Fleet. To get the Naboo. Cut They're the there already? The Warship Naboo. Eh, maybe you want to change the name a little bit to something more intimidating. Let's get in turn. <laughs> that looks so cool. Will they start doing construction on the way back? Or will they wait until it's back on Tycho? We have secured the nozzle. We'll begin retrofit immediately. Oh. Damn. We need a resupply. A Robin Graves. I feel the same way, but what else can we do? Dead people don't need their stuff. Robin, oh, Robin Graves. I was like, who's Robin Graves? It's a smart idea, Alex. Naomi gave us these. <laughs> They'll let us read news feeds, talk to the crew, but no communications beyond the ship. Didn't they train you to bend people to your will? I can't even make you do what I want, and you're half my size. <laughs> Look, I'm a shooter, not a spy. Following images show. Doc, I thought we learned our lessons about leaving tools to unsecured in zero G. Twisting humans into monsters on purpose. How could you do that to another person? Secure that. Captain, I need your help. Yeah, I guess dwelling on it at the moment isn't helping him, but I, it's hard not to, I understand. Wow. That was a great shot. Red Gibble. A belt is staple. Hot and spicy. Hmm. Are you offering to cook? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. I know I don't. No, no, no. <laughs> what I meant was, that's really nice. <laughs> I just 
just felt something. SOS. Someone's alive in here. What? So they're stripping out dead and you're okay with this? Nobody asked you. Why are they setting up an emergency airlock? They might have found some survivors and if we hadn't been stripping the dead, we wouldn't have. Lester Seal is good. I knew Mars wouldn't leave us behind. We must not shy away from this or pretend otherwise. The one thing that we know for certain with the greatest sorrow is the truth that Mars has turned away from. Given a chance to transcend our history, Mars has instead insisted in what it calls independence. They have lost sight of our shared humanity, and so they must be reminded. It is our duty, not as the government of Earth, but as the moral leaders of our species under one unified flag and together move forward into this brave new chapter of history. Thank you for your help. <laughs> you freaking snake. Beautiful. You certainly are. Whoa. I wasn't worried. We don't leave our people behind. Uh, <laughs> we're not Martians. You're out of uniform. That's a Tachi jumpsuit. This is the Tachi. You're James Holden. All right, easy, easy guys. We'll get food, medical attention, whatever you may need. But for now, you're confined to your quarters. So we are prisoners. You're alive. And I didn't see a line of Martian ships coming to save you. Then a justification for war and violence. <laughs> you gotta get back there. Terrible and miraculous moment, and they see it as an opportunity to revisit it. She knows her. Food? You put it in that big hole in your face? <laughs> they need to talk to Holden. But, but food. Good talk. What was that? Was it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it? Is Naomi not a good cook? <laughs> Whoa! I guess Prax has gotten used to a lot of this. Mm. But I did my twenty, son. I'm honorably discharged. I'm a civilian now. We're at war. No one's a civilian now. Okay. All right, kids. Enough's enough. All right, settle down. Jeez. Bobby, come here and kick all their asses. Oh, jeez. We're taking the ship. Get the fuck back to work. I need food access. Yeah, that's just not a good idea. So I can a man has always been a fucking bobblehead. But tonight I saw something else. I saw Deputy Anne Wright speaking through his mouth. And that man is not a fool. Let me send her this message. If she brings it to the Secretary General, it'll show him who his deputy really is. The longer this goes, the more bombs will fall. This is... Please help me stop it. This is so hard. This is impossible to say no to. Send it out as quietly as we can. Thank you for being the man your mother knows you are. <sighs> Sending a message. Nothing more. You can't trust her. And I can trust you? I understand what she is. I'm gonna help Amos with the supplies. <sighs> Alex, can we take a look at the drive balance in real quick? <sighs> Sorry. I can't abandon two of my crew. I know you understand that. This is starting to feel a little bit ungrateful. Oh, jeez. He's freaking. Yes. Finish him. Sleeper hold. Go see if Ranoff is okay. I think he's still alive. <laughs> 
didn't know where the ammo was. There's a version of this where nobody shoots anybody. Let's try for that one. Hey, fellas. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna give you a pass because you're young and stupid. But keep pointing that thing at me and I'm gonna take it away from you. You think you can? That's recon gear. Lofty, she could force feed you that gun if she wanted to. All your friends are dead and this feels like a way to honor them. It feels like you're doing your duty. I want You to. want to fight the enemy, I know. But I learned a while the back enemy. that the hardest part of this game is figuring out who the enemy really is. And these guys aren't it. We'll find another way. Come on. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Oh. Shit. Did I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> coming in from everywhere mm -hmm. you twisted my words you made me part of everything that i hate about all of this no, that's not I fair i can't believe i fell for this again i am such an idiot i used to believe that there was a decent man somewhere inside you buried under all that ambition i'm sorry i was so wrong <sighs> you're christian avasarala yes the UN Deputy Undersecretary. This is going to be very tedious. <laughs> I remain this dim. I don't understand. What the hell kind of a ship is this? This war is a lie. The only way it can be stopped is out here, away from the politicians. Yes, I'm aware of the irony. This is why I left. <laughs> you want me to go back and tell my CO to hail a UN and admiral in the middle of a war? Yes, exactly. Or Holden here can space the three of you for being such intolerable idiots. Honestly, I can go either way. I'd rather do the first one. I'm coming home. <sighs> right now. I'm glad. If that's the best thing you can be doing right now, don't do it for me. Wow. <laughs> if I needed to be humbled, wouldn't having all my hair fall out of debt at this... <laughs> This feels like overkill. <laughs> Believing that God is humbling you using a solar system wide war feels <laughs> ironic at the very least. <laughs> we love you. Come home. I am on my way. You're going to get that message. I love you. You're going to get that message right now. <sighs> Time is short and I'll be brief. Martian Defense Minister Korshinov suffered a fatal heart attack. You just can't help yourself, can you? Saving everyone. That's right. You just can't stop yourself. Thank you. I'm glad you're okay. You cannot see him. You're me. Ooh. <laughs> Reminds him of Julie. I know the type. I told what's in here. Why do you say that? I saw his nurse going there. Bring Strickland to me, now. Katoa! It's me, Betty! <laughs> Sir, we were so close. I couldn't in good conscience abandon the test when we were so far along. Don't Human let her see this. Essential. My hands. Disassembly reveals useful pathways. You are right to continue. Dog, ah, but the key to everything. <sighs> you were right to continue. Yeah, you were right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where the nurse went. <laughs> oh, God damn it! This show is too good. So much going on in this episode. Uh, it starts with the Nevu, though. Uh, I thought they'd have to like accelerate to ridiculous speeds to be able to catch up to it eventually, but I don't know why it didn't occur to me that they could just like shut it off the Nevu's engine like remotely so that they could catch up with it. They were like obviously controlling it remotely because no one was on board when it was trying to ram into Eros, but like since it was meant to go on a one-way journey, it doesn't look like it was fitted with much like turning capability. Uh, so we're treated to that amazing shot, seeing them like change the Nevu's uh, direction with so many drones. And yeah, so this is going to feel like a pretty fast turnaround. 
Uh, I was wondering if they could retrofit it en route to Tycho, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Previously, I was just like, oh, pretty sure like the Nauvoo won't make it back in time to make a difference in this war, though they likely would not want to get involved anyway. Um, but I guess if they get the ship uh, up and running soon, uh, they might be bigger players. They can offer their, offer their helps to either Mars or Earth, uh, whichever group will cut them a better deal once the war is over. Or um, maybe something, maybe whichever group can cut them a better deal now. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, Gillis reads the spe speech Anna wrote for him, and like she's mouthing the words along with him. But yeah, Aaron Wright's actions have pushed Gillis too far, and he feels like his hesitation cost millions of lives, uh, completely changing his message. Uh, com completely changing the message that Anna wrote. She So he used her words and then twisted them to fit his own agenda. And I can understand why she felt just like so disgusted. Um, and yeah, so often we have politicians. So I, I have... I have thoughts about like when politicians should follow the will of the people. Uh, right now, in our case, is the our politicians don't follow us enough. But there are also times when you shouldn't listen to the public, because um, the will of the people, honestly, sometimes it's sometimes it's not important, as ridiculous as that sounds. Like, uh, for instance, public support for the Iran war uh, before we launched it was like 60, 70 something percent, uh, but it was absolutely the wrong move. Um, public favor for the crime bill in 1994 was pretty high, and look where that got where that got us. Uh, and conversely, like, support for gay marriage was, like, in the low 30-something percents in the early 2000s. Uh, probably single digits in the 60s and 70s. And so real leadership is coming out during those times and fighting for what is right, no matter what public opinion is. Because, like, yeah, I, if you know U.S. politics, uh, even just, like, presidential candidates, you probably know who I'm talking about when I say they fought for gay rights in the 60s and 70s. But, yeah, people need leadership from someone who's trying to do the right thing not from someone who's trying to score political points, which is what Gillis is doing right now. His legacy! Ugh. And I'm just like... There, there, is a, there is a line where you want to fight for the people most of the time when it's in their best interests, but your job is to know more than the general public. And so there are times, uh, there are moments when you need to lead as a politician and go against the grain, even if it costs you your job or your... Uh, popularity um, but yeah that's what I think should make up a leader but anyway meanwhile on the Rastinante they're running low on all kinds of supplies and so they decide to do a salvage mission on dead Martian ships and uh, <laughs> Alex says that they're doing all this by like they're resupplying by Robin Graves and I'm just like who is Robin Graves like I, I don't remember anybody with a first name Robin or last name Graves and then I was just like, oh, yeah, robbing, robbing graves. Um, but yeah, Alex is understandably upset. Uh, Bobby even more so. But like, they she cools off like almost immediately because she realizes that they found survivors. Um, and then there's like this little subplot of Naomi like cooking for everybody, like Belter food, a red kibble. Uh, understandably, with what little they have to work with on the in the belt, it's not the best. Uh, I love how. When Bobby took the first bite, she just kind of, like, paused and, like, <laughs> it was really funny. Um, and then I, I, I love how indignant she gets when Alex is like, whoa, you're offering to cook? Because she took it as, like, you, a belter, cook? No one wants to eat that. When he was actually like, oh, that's, like, a really nice gesture that you want to cook for us. Um, so she's used to non-belters looking down on her, I guess, which is why she responded the way she did. Um, but it was, it was, it was tr uh, amusing. Um, but yeah, they wind up saving the three Martians, and you had to see that coming. Like, it was a very dumb move, leaving Alex alone with them like that, especially since they had a, he had a gun. Uh, even without a gun, anything in that room that could be used as a weapon could be used to threaten him and take him hostage. Uh, like, these are a bunch of upstarts that you don't know how they're going to react, and they all just, like, easily ganged up on Alex. <sighs> Thankfully, though, even though their guns, like, aren't registered to their fingerprints, there were no bullets in the automatic weapons that that one soldier went to get. Um, but yeah, those kids, like, screw them. Like, these people saved your life, and you're so quick to violence and try to take over the ship. Like, how can you be so freaking ungrateful? It's not... 
It's not like they were put in an unreasonable situation. Like, we saved your lives, lives, but we don't know who you are, so we're keeping you confined to your quarters for now. Um, and then they just, like, they decide, oh, let's beat up the veteran of our army and let's take this ship. Honestly, like, the crew of the Rosandante would have been perfectly justified in executing every last one of them. Uh, they're good enough people that they don't. I wouldn't have either, but I certainly would not have let them go. I would have kept them... I mean, since they have another goal in mind, it makes sense to let them go. But, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have been so nice to them in the first place. Um, I would have been tried to be nice, but I would have, like, protected myself and my crew. Um, but yeah, they found a use for them, sending Admiral Souther that transmission of Aaron Wright. Uh, also, <laughs> Alex uh, was in the military for 20 years, but I feel like he could really use like some combat training. Uh, I've heard that, like I think he just like shipped things back and forth, and I'm not sure if he's ever won a fight he's been in on on this show, which is kind of sad. Uh, I mean, this time it was like three on one and one of them surprised him, but I still remember when they found the Blue Falcon, how jumpy he was when like someone came out of their room. Uh, and I feel like he hasn't been much use in a fight, obviously, then obviously then, um, other than like the space fights, which he's awesome at. But like, someone teach him some self-defense, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, Bobby is able to talk the woman down when, uh, and able to disarm her. So Alex is fine and grateful to Bobby. Holden decides to help Christian send that message to Anna. Is it Anna or Anna? I don't know. But also... Uh, and also have the three Martians go and send the message to Admiral Souther. So it feels like the group is, like, building genuine trust together uh, and becoming more of a cohesive group. And then there's even some reconciliation between Holden and Naomi. Like, she thanks him for saving people. Uh, she was against him helping Christian at first, but after he saves her life, uh, recognizes that his actions to help Christian are a part of who he is. And it's a part that she's thankful for because she he came in and like saved her and Alex, and I mean I don't know this I don't think this is going to be a permanent group like uh, the crew of the Rosinante, Prax, Christian, and Bobby. I don't think I don't think Christian, Bobby, and Prax are going to stay long term because uh, Prax, unless Prax's daughter dies, he probably if his daughter dies he might join the group permanently, um, but if she if he's able to save her, that he's obviously not going to like bring her along for all these space adventures. It's freaking dangerous. Um, and I don't see Christian flying around on the Rosinante forever either, especially with how much she hates space. And when she leaves, Bobby will probably leave with her. So, yeah, assuming all three of those characters don't go the way of Miller, like these are lifelong allies and friendships that are being created. Uh, so the Pinus Contorta, Through the Fire... Uh, a new crew is born, it almost feels like. So yeah, it's really fun to watch. And yeah, so now we have Anna. Um, she wanted to go home. Um, she was so pissed at uh, Aaron Wright and Gillis. She felt manipulated. Uh, similar to how she was manipulated by him before, I guess. Which, I'm not exactly sure what got him into that position of power. And what exactly pissed her off so much in the first place, but I definitely feel like it's, like it's just, justified. But yeah, now she has the recording and will try to expose him, but I don't even know that it matters. Like, Christian touched on what I was saying about Gillis last episode. Like, I said he's too easily swayed and, like, kind of listens to whoever um, speaks to him last. Like, he listened to Anna and, like, tried to hold back from, like, firing the railguns, and then Aaron Wright talks him into it, like, immediately. Um... Yeah, and he doesn't have like a good center of like moral judgment. He like relies on other people too much, uh, and like <laughs> Christian summed that up all by just saying that uh, he's a bobblehead, which is just a genius term for that. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing is he's too concerned with his legacy, and he's kind of gone beyond the point of no return. Exposing Aaron Wright and taking back his actions, and taking back his words, would put egg on his face uh, in terms of the public. And I don't think he's willing to do that. He's too concerned with what people think of him. So maybe instead of going to Gillis with the message, uh, Anna can go directly to the people. Or go to Gillis, but also have the video uploaded automatically if they choose to detain her to keep the truth hidden. Um, I don't know how strong public sentiment would be able to shift him either, though. 
But yeah, the episode closes with Mei and Jupiter Mao coming upon the experiment that Strickland is still running. And Katoa, um, he's suppressed, his autoimmune disease has suppressed the protomolecule to an extent. He's obviously not one of those hybrids, but it still has a huge influence on him. Um, there's still a part of, their, a part of him in there somewhere because he felt sorry for what he did. But then, like, the protomolecule took over for a second and, like, it was a switch and yeah um we saw that it made him tear his nurse apart and disassemble him which the proto molecule is not a concern with life or death definitely it's concerned more with understanding uh that's why it took apart the Ar Ar arbogast is that how you pronounce it and then also uh this nurse um it wants to understand so it's learning but what is it trying to do with that knowledge and is it trying to build something out of all those it's trying to find like something to build out of all these separate parts, all these dis dis disassembled parts. And yeah, he's not as strong as uh, Eros down on Venus. Like he can't, he has to disassemble by hand. So, but it it's all very curious. But yeah, uh, I hope May isn't. She's traumatized, but I hope she isn't too much more traumatized. Even if she, even if Prax winds up saving. Her, I'm just like, she's she's been through a lot. Um, it's gonna be rough. And yeah, Jules, Pierre Mao. He thinks that Strickland was right to continue the project despite his orders to end it. What little hope I had for him to end this is just now gone. He thinks that they are on the verge of figuring something out, so it's worth it to torture these little kids. Uh, it it seems like it's probably too late to save Katoa. Uh, no way to get him out of get the proto molecule out of him, and like even if you do, he has to live with the trauma of tearing that nurse apart. And I'm sure the proto molecule has already done irreparable changes, made irreparable changes to his brain and ca body chemistry, his hormone level. Um, yeah, so I don't know what type of technology they have in the future, but it seems super improbable that um, they are able to get it out of him. Proto molecule just seems like super. It, like, it melds with you, so there's no way... I feel like if you try to take it out, it would learn how to stay inside. Uh, so it seems, like, inoperable. And what if, what if it comes down to, like, Prax has to be the one to take him out? Uh, that would suck quite a bit, I feel like. Um, because he knows his daughter has possibly gone through the same thing, or is going through the same thing. Um, but yeah, this, this season has just been non-stop. I mean, alright, I'm gonna give this a 9.0. I'm sorry, this has been 9.0's four episodes in a row. It's been the same score since the start of the season. Uh, it's just been that good this whole entire time. And I don't know. I'm wondering if... Uh, don't answer this, but I'm just wondering out loud. If the season... Uh, like the end of book... Th is this book two? Yeah, I'm wondering if the end of book two is somewhere in the middle of season three. Or if it's the end of season three. So, yeah. Um, we could come with a pretty big climax uh, in a few episodes, or we might wait for uh, the end of the season. Though I feel like every episode there is a lot of stuff going on and it's all really captivating. Uh, season 3 so far has been... my. F I feel like the quality has been the highest it's been, but there's no one episode I can point to that I'm just like, oh, that is amazing. There's no, like, home. There's no episode where uh, Naomi sends... Naomi uh, gets put on the ship and then the somnambulist uh, by the guy who sacrificed his own spot for her. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's coming soon. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. And uh, we're also one week ahead of ahead of YouTube over there as well. So yeah, leave a like. really helps out this channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, friends.